Oh, it's been a rough week. So last Saturday, we took Bottle Rocket to the track and uh, loading it back on the trailer. We only made one run. Loading it back on the trailer, I, t I tore something in my lower back. It wasn't so much loading the car on the trailer, obviously, that was no problem, but I had this heavy gate that I built for a different application before we started using it to haul our cars around. I built this heavy gate for it, and in order to, to get it on and off, you've got to kind of like, you know, pick it up and move it around and, and, and align it so it latches in. Well, I, I, I twisted something. So this whole week, I've just been in agony. I'm walking around like a zombie. I haven't really got much done here in the shop. I'm getting getting stuff done, but you know, I'm moving at a really, really slow pace. So I wanted to do some work on Slayer Camera. I want to before. We, oh wait, wait. Before I even do that, before I even do that, I caught some criticism, deserved criticism, no problem, from the video we posted with Bottle Rocket, and people were like, you know. Other people don't post their times, and you criticize them, and then you don't post your times. The run that we showed was a 770 with a 169 60 foot. And that was leaving in second gear and only spraying for half, maybe a little bit, a little bit more than half track. So that'll give you an idea of what it does. So that, was, that was that run. It goes faster than that. But, all right, are you happy? There's numbers. All right. So we're coming up on the end of the year really fast. And I wanted to get some work done on Slag Hammer before we pull it apart for the winter. There's a couple of changes I want to make and I want to re-ring it. But the car's still up and functional, so I might as well work the rest of the bugs out of it while it's still here in my hands. So this goes back to when we first put this thing together. It had an odd problem. So it's got a it's got a Chrysler Mini starter and it has a bat battery mounted in the trunk, all normal stuff. And the situation with this car was that it a crank, it a crank for five seconds, eight seconds, like that, like perfect. Just, and then and then it'll just slow down, just like that, right? So you say, oh, it's got a bad battery or whatever. No, no, check the battery. It's actually, it's got a brand new battery in it. Never made any difference. And the car has a, has a, a mechanical fuel pump. So sometimes you do have to crank it just to get the, it, it's a pain priming it every time you want to start it. So you, you'll crank it to get the fuel pump up. So I had forgotten all about this because I'm busy with other stuff. Now, but now I'm focusing on the car and trying to get these last bugs worked out of it before we take it apart. It's like, all right. Let's fire this thing up. So I go to start it. What is this? All right. New battery. I check the battery. It's fully charged. Put the load tester on it. It's all good. I throw a set of. I throw a, another battery in the trunk with a set of jumper cables. Crank it. It's a little bit better, but still laboring. Right? Doesn't want it. Doesn't want to just spin freely. What is this? So starter well this is the second starter that's been in the car the first one did exactly the same thing this one is new and it's not hot to the touch so when the motor slows down when, it, when it's when it's cranking and it slows down when the starter is bad the starter will start to get extremely hot usually it, it'll be like a, a bad armature or or the bushings are bad so the armature cocks a little bit and creates all kinds of resistance and it'll it'll do that but it also gets very hot when that happens so that wasn't the problem so another typical problem is battery cable. The battery cable is, is the positive battery cable. Very long cable, and sometimes it's either undersized, which what this one isn't, or it's it's bad inside. It'll break it's it'll break down inside. But either way, you'll get a hot spot. So I crank the engine. I get it to where it's like slowing down, and now I start feeling all the way down the wire because you'll feel it right away when it when, it was, when one of those cables has a bad spot in it you'll feel it so i'm feeling all the way down the wire all the way to the back of the car nothing completely cool to the touch it's weird let me check the ground the, the negative side and i do and the negative side is a little warm all right then from the battery from the battery to the switch to the cutoff switch is a little warm so no did i said i said that wrong so from the cutoff switch to the car, 
is a little warm, right? So I look at the cable connection and I see that here's, here's what it, uh, that's what it was hooked to. I'm like, oh, well, that's a problem. It's, it's thin, it's thin sheet metal and there's still paint on it and everything, right? That's it. Simple. So I says, I'm going to relocate this to a better ground, right? To a better ground area. So I take that cable and I mount it, I clean all the rust off over here and I mount it here. Problem fixed, right? Nope. I go, I crank the car, does the same exact thing. Cranks for eight or 10 seconds and then it just slows way down. Like as if it had a dead battery. What? Bad cable? Then I saw, wait a minute. So, when we put this car together, we bought one of these off the Summit. One of these fuel, uh, the battery cutoff switches. So, I says, maybe this is it. I take, I take the cable, the, the cable that goes from the battery to here off, and I mount it here. I, I bolt it directly to the bumper of the car. Hit the starter button. Yeah, so it'll just sit there and do it, you know, until something broke, burns up. That was it. That was it. Brand new, out of the box, from Summit. Quick car, battery disconnect. So if you guys are having, you guys got one of these things, and I'm not saying they're all bad, I'm not saying they're all bad, but this one is. So if you've got, if you've got one of these battery cutoff switches and your car is acting funny like that, you got a weird, you know, where it slows way down, you know, there you go. There's your problem. So while we're at it and while we're on the subject of those battery cutoff switches, this is actually a video I wanted to do when we first got it, when we, when we first put this thing together and it says, oh, I got to do a quick video on these switches and their wiring and all that. Because here's, okay, so here's the situation with these. NHRA mandates, and everybody goes by NHRA rules, safety rules. NHRA mandates that if you've got the battery relocated to the truck, you have to have a master cutoff switch. And the master cutoff switch has to be able to kill all power to the car. So this way, if you have an accident, you're upside down, you're on fire, whatever it happens to be, the track worker can run to the back of the car and just flip the switch off. And this way, if your fuel pump is still running or the engine is still running or any, anything is functioning, right, it kills it. All right. And it's a good common sense rule. You know, no complaints about that rule because I, I've, I've seen bad situations that, that that could have. So, but here's... Here's the thing, right? I've seen some of the most insanely over-engineered, convoluted methods of, of accomplishing this with relays on top of relays on top of, with, with, with tons of wiring running front to back and through the car. Just absolute craziness to try to get this switch to kill all electrical power to the car. Now, all that really counts, you're talking about killing all the electrical power to the car. What we're talking about now is the ignition and the fuel pump, electric fuel pump. Now, this particular car doesn't have an electric pump, it has a, a mechanical pump, has a, a high volume, high pressure Carter mechanical pump on it, like a hemi pump. So all I really have to worry about this is killing the ignition. But even still, if it did have an electric fuel pump, this would work just as well. So keep this in mind, if you've got to wire one of these when you put the battery in the trunk and you've got to put a master kill switch in there. Rather than going nuts with, like I said, relays and, and, and wires to here and wires to there and everything else, here's how you do this simple and absolutely meet the rules, period, the end, okay? It, this, this will pass tech. Because when they come over, if they, if, if they do want to check it, they want the car running, and when they hit that switch, they want everything to stop. So here's how you do this without going nuts, right? If your car, like this one, has an alternator 
with an external field wire or external field circuit all you need to do is run either like this one here has two fields on it okay all you need to do is run one of the field wires into the car with a kill switch with an interrupt switch so now think about this you really should have this anyway there's no reason to have your alternator functioning on your race car as it's going down the track you're robbing five to seven horsepower off the front of the motor doing this so if you if you wire in a field cutoff switch and let's say you pull up to the station or the front of the station lanes you're going to do your burnout shut the field if you've got a good battery and you should have a good battery you've got more than enough battery there to run the systems of the car for the next minute minute and a half that it's going to be going down the track and it meets the rules so if they're going to tech your car you're going to bring the car into the tech make sure that the field cutter switch is off so that when they check it it kills everything and then just hook you turn it back on so you can drive it to the staging lanes you're going to warm the car you're going to tr charge the battery or whatever but before you make your run make sure the switch is off not just to cheat the rules but because legitimately you really do want somebody to be able to just come and shut everything off the back of the car so if you're killing the alternator and then with the switch you're killing the battery that's it there, no power can be generated through the car so, you know, common sense and simple, 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 simple. I love simple things. People accuse me of being a simpleton all the time and I will own that. And, and I, I gotta get, I, I gotta go do something on your back. I, I gotta go lay down or something. I'm really a mess. And I wanna go to the track tomorrow. We wanna, we wanna take Bottle Rocket out one more time. She's still sitting on the trailer ready to go. All right, that's it guys. I hope you got something out of that. Beware cheap battery cutoff switches. I'll see you tomorrow.